Hello, and welcome to another episode of DMTV. The majority of Europe is essentially at war with Russia in every way other than boots on the ground and bullets in the air. A series of sanctions of questionable efficiency targeting Russia have landed Europe in a veritable economic crisis and a cost of living crisis. Besides, following the reported Iranian drone strike in Kiev, voices in Brussels are also calling for Tehran to be added to the list of sanction targets at a time when Europe has been trying to revive the bruised nuclear deal that was ripped apart by the Trump administration a few years ago. Meanwhile, long-standing neutral nations such as Finland and Sweden are moving towards joining NATO, making essentially the European Union a geopolitical appendix to the US-led alliance. With us today, we had the absolute pleasure of having Amine Kakababe, a former Peshmerga fighter in her teenage years. She eventually made her way to Sweden, where she learned Swedish, graduated from Stockholm University, and became an activist, and eventually a member of the Riksdag, the country's parliament. In recent months, following her resignation after many years of membership of the left party, Amine played a decisive role in the balance of power in the country's parliament and was targeted by the Turkish president Erdogan in his list of demanded extraditions from Sweden to Turkey in return for his support of the country's NATO membership bid. Together, we discussed the rise of the far right, the failure of the left in Sweden and the rest of Europe, as well as its successes in Latin America, the invasion of Ukraine and Europe's very worrying um, acceptance of war as the new norm, the inspiring demonstrations in her native Iran, and much more besides. Hope you enjoy the show. I have been uh, a member of the parliament in 14 and a half years in Sweden, more than three mandates, three and a half. I am actually from the Kurdistan, Iran, and I have uh, I have never uh, I have never done anything uh, that could be, you know, against the law, against Turkey. The only thing is, you know, I use my parliamentarian position as well as criticize it. Iran, the Kurdish in KRG, Israel, you know, countries in Latin America, Sweden and, and other countries, absolutely. Turkey were, uh, is also one of them. They're a dictatorship and, and the Kurds, they are not. Uh, they, if you demand your right, you are in prison. Can you tell me a bit more about what your plans are now? Uh, you, you, you didn't run in the latest European, in the latest Swedish elections. You're not in the left party anymore. Um, where, where do you see yourself politically? Because you, you've gathered quite a few people around you with your very principled political stance in Sweden. Um, so so where, where do you see this going in the future? I didn't find myself in left party because left party has banned their own principles and, the, the, you know, the, the, the socialism. Uh, so uh, why I, I left them and I, um, I didn't want to go to any other, you know, small parties we have. They asked me, but I said, no, I am against sectarism, any kind of sectarism, you know, just the old uh, communist parties, you know, or or um, Trotskyism. We have a lot of small parties, but uh, I don't believe that um, nowadays we do need the left party we have now is a more look like social democratic party five years ago, you know. And the, and the other parties, they are still in, you know, they, they think that imperialism is just America and, and, and uh, n nothing had, you know, changed. But everything has changed, actually. So I have another analyze. It's a more actually look like uh, uh, DMO and, and you uh, mentioned. Um, just to comment that I think the idea is very, very um wonderful and, and excellent to democratization of of uh, democratize of, of eu but it it takes time of course hopefully we can start a political movement uh, which is for you know anti war uh, for solidarity and anti militarism anti war and anti militarism to me is uh, 
the same and um, and you know for the uh, social justice uh, it is very important the war in ukraine if the united nation and the, and the eu and nato want they could stop it because they just want to lock and uh, uh, and to put in to destroy the uh, you know U- ukraine because nato and other country wants to and swedish sweden too to make more weapon to sell to them right now we have multiple sides to this uh, conflict and none of them are interested in peace they all are interested in further entrenching and making this war a permanent fixture um because everybody stands to gain our sanctions against russia have essentially increased their um their gdp and have completely undermined european citizens uh, through an unprecedented uh, cost of living crisis um the americans are making a killing through the military industrial complex and liquefied natural gas that they're exporting to to europe and countries that politically were not necessarily very much on the same page are being brought closer together as a counterbalance to this polarization that europe and the west is creating so you have countries like iran and china coming closer to russia not because they have that much in common um other than the fact that they don't want american and nato hegemony in the world so th- these really short sighted um moves that have been done by uh, by the west are are really blowing this entire um conflict into a completely different proportion um and 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 unfortunately nobody seems to benefit from peace right now all the major political players are interested in the continuation of this war because they still have much more to gain out of it absolutely i, I agree that, that that is i i i told the swedish parliament uh, from the start when they were voting uh, for uh, you know before the summer and during the summer to send um, uh, weapon to uh, to ukraine i said that uh, it is not to help uh, precisely uh, the people and, and the peace uh, because i have been by myself uh, growing up during bombs and and during war i have been by myself peshmerga I know that um, the weapon, uh, if there is NATO and Swedish and, and Russian and American, they actually kill people. The political discussion, the political narrative, the mainstream in Europe um, has completely shifted towards the right. And we, we see that, of course, in, 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 Europe, in, in election results. Um, but we also see it in, in the way, like you said, the the social democrats have basically become conservative the left parties have become social democrats everything has shifted further to the right that is where the normality is so really the 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 fact that um european nations now are reacting in the way that they're reacting to this russian um to russian aggression and it is absolutely aggression and what is being done is illegal and, and of course that goes without saying it's of course um but the fact that they are reacting to it by further polarizing and joining the other side might also be explained by the fact that there is a political hegemony basically there's a, a, a um a dominant narrative across Europe that is far more to the right than it used to be in the 90s 80s and and 70s wouldn't you say yeah, that, that is absolutely what i have been telling that we we are in the you know um, uh, paradigm shift uh, you know from from social democracy to uh, neoliberalism very very quick neoliberalism had just destroyed destroyed human being destroyed uh, you know the the climate destroyed the people's lives people's housing people's you know agriculture uh, class society now everything is in the hands of capitalism plus militarism because of the war as you know they they have uh, they, they use everything now you can pay the food uh, 35% more you know expensive this is the war 
the El NRG is about the war. Everything they are now, capitalism use the war as an excuse <laughs> to, to get more money from the state. Tell us a bit more about this result in Sweden, the electoral result. And what do you think it signifies for Sweden and Europe in terms of both the success of the far right, but also this, this failure of, of the left? The working class, even here as in Iran and other countries, they are so tired. They are working, you know, who is the working class, really working class in Sweden? Believe me, it is migrants and women, uh, Swedish women, they are working in the, in the service sector. But, but more than 80% is the migrant, as in, I mean, refugees. People like me, you know, and 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 they, they are less paid, stressful. Uh, they are not with the union. They can be said that if you say no, I put another, I replace you with another people, with another worker. I I, I see every day. I hear every day. From, from from the people I know, they are my friends, uh, they, they tell me. So from those people, unfortunately, you can have any expectation. But I have expectation from the, from the union, working union, from, you know, the people who, who says that they are socialist, the, the social democratic, you know. Uh, but but uh, unfortunately... Unfortunately, the society is so divided between rich and the, who they have so much and who they have nothing. Iran lately has been quite a bit in the news uh, with an incredible women's movement that's given rise to a, a big wave of, of renewed solidarity from, from the world for, for, the, for the situation for women and, and people in general in, in Iran and with, with the government there. Um, what what is your view of that situation? What can we expect in Iran? And where do you see Europe's role uh, in, in what's unfolding there? First of all, um, yes, the Iranian women and, and the, the Kurdish women, especially Kurdish men, they start actually the struggle from the my city, Sakas, the Regina Masa Amini were, were, uh, was killed. And... Um, uh, uh, actually, uh, the, the start because the regime until yesterday, they don't want to, he, he, her parents, they say anything out uh, on the media, you know, for international. But uh, uh, Masa, Regina Amin's uh, father and mother and brother, they do not silent. And the people in Kurdistan, they actually uh, support uh, uh, them and uh, and from the start, uh, uh, the, that became a women a revolution in Kurdistan and the whole Iran, and uh, because actually since two thousand eleven, uh, when they started the Arab uprising, especially in uh, Egypt, I said for myself, next revolution, it happens, it be in Iran and Kurdistan, it is women. And actually, we saw that women in Rojava, they fight against the barbary, Islamic barbary. Now, none country couldn't defeat if that was not thank you to the Kurdish men and women, especially women in Rojava, in Kubani. So, so that, that is very important to, to mention about that. I have been you know, fight uh, through both left parties and in the parliament and outside the parliament. I said that when that was apartheid uh, uh, in South Africa, all the countries in the world gathered together to be against. But when we have gender apartheid against half of the population in Iran, in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, in Afghanistan, nobody said nothing. So. The, if the European countries, if uh, the European countries, you know, didn't support Iran like a country, they says that it is security, it is, um, you know, uh, 
they maintain uh, the stability and establishment in Middle East. That is why they don't want to, you know, do anything with Iran, even if they know that Iran has, you know, uh, more like Putin and, and Erdogan. Uh, you know, the Kuti rebels in Yemen, uh, threatening, um, you know, uh, they have in, in the spy better and Quds in Iraq, they have Hamas in, uh, you know, against Israel, and they have the Hezbollah in Lebanon. So in six countries, actually, uh, Iran has very, very bad and and uh, influence and and yelping, of course. And now they send sold drones to uh, uh, to to uh, Putin uh, in the war in Ukraine. They use uh, the European country. They have not done so much. They have decided to um, uh, put. Uh, boycott and, and put uh, 11 uh, membership of, uh, of the government of Iran. But the problem the uh, EU leaders, they don't analyze uh, and probably they make some uh, agreement with the Iranian regime uh, because for the European country, everything is that to be bound from Putin. What happened with the Iranian women? What happened with the Kurdish? What happened with the, the, the Turkish people or the Kurdish people in, in, in Turkey? That is not any meaning. The meaning is the economical relations and the power and the, it, uh, it, you know, it, weapon. It, yeah. We just can't accept the current political mainstream as enough. It's not enough. We need more. We need much, much more. And if we can already all agree that the solutions will not come from the current political actors, that's already mm -hmm. a start. So, yeah, I wish you every possible success in what you do in Sweden and your initiatives for uh, non-aligned um, movements and for peace and for social justice. I sincerely hope that our paths on that yeah. struggle will cross with Diem and we can do everything Absolutely. we can to bring more power to that and to bring it to the rest of Europe as well, which at this time when the mm. discussion is so polarized, it so desperately needs it. So thank you for Absolutely. everything you're there. Absolutely. Thank you. Have thank a you. nice time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much to you. Bye-bye.